Now we've got a block out here and this is quite nice for what we want to do, but I do sort of get this sort of feeling that the um, entire sort of room is a bit too close to each other. So, you know, not, not a lot of distance between what we've got. So I'm just going to distance the room a bit. Um, basically, if I take this column over here and I say, right, let's just move this sort of like about here, then what I would need to do is move this wall till about there. And if I switch over to like a, a wireframe, Alt 2, or, you know, back to color mode, you can see that there is no real, I mean, th these two are connecting. And one of the nice thing about this sort of thing is that uh, we're obviously able to see how the light uh, interacts with the environment quite easily because of this, because of the uh, material simplicity that we're using, which is just this white color. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this over here, move it inside like that, and then take the wall, move it outside until it intersects with the cube. And then I'm able to obviously move all of these enough um, to the point where they intersect again. So that just sort of maintains the flow of our scene. And now we have a bigger sort of gap in here to work with. And now it's time for us to start putting in the assets that are going to replace, uh, you know, one by one, we're going to replace the stuff that we've got already in here and we're going to do that by first starting with the i always like to do the sort of the stuff that's above ground level before i move on to the ground level and there is a i mean i know i know this might, this might sound a bit counterintuitive in the sense of well how do we know that the objects will align properly with the floor once we've got the floor in and i get that but again it's going to be a lot easier to move one asset which is going to be the floor than to move all of these individual assets. And I've got a solution for these as well, because we're not going to sort of manually place all of them like we did with the cubes, because we can look at sort of a procedural workflow to do this. Uh, and when I say procedural, it's not, you know, don't think about something extraordinary. It's something simple enough to understand, but it's got a lot of, uh, it can have a lot of weight in the long run. So let's uh, set something up, which is going to be quite useful for you to understand as well because it's based on a blueprint okay and to open a blueprint we're going to go into our content editor i'm going to create a new folder called uh, blueprints and then in, this, in here like we can double click this and we can actually right click and select the um, you know blueprint class at which point it's going to ask us what type of blueprint we want to make and in this particular case we want to make an actor and then we're going to call this bp um we'll say mesh generator or something like that because uh, effectively that's what it is then we're going we can double click it and this will open the blueprint uh let me just uh dock it in over here like that so this is what happens when you open a new blueprint this is kind of the basic interface of what you get there's nothing in the blueprint right now apart from the roots of the blueprint which is in the center of the world of the blueprint so to speak um, okay, so what we want to do here, because we're going to use splines to generate meshes along the path, uh, we can press the add button here and search for spline. And then you've got a few options in here, but you want to just select the spline itself. Um, and then for the spline, we're going to add, uh, it's not a static mesh, it's in instead an instanced static mesh, as you can see right there. Okay, so not hierarchical, but instant static mesh. And we can leave that as it is. We could also rename it if we wanted to something else, but you know, just leave it as that. It's pretty straightforward and very self-explanatory. Now, once we have this in, in place, uh, we don't actually have anything loaded into, into here at all, uh, but we're gonna leave it for now the way it is. Instead, what we're going to do, you can see the spline over here being generated. There's nothing loaded in a static mesh and that's fine. We can hit compile. And now we have a construction script that where we need to start defining our blueprint. So over in here, we're going to drag from this pin and we're going to set a uh, search for set static. Oh, sorry, uh, mesh. And then it automatically already picks instant static mesh, which is the one that we've added here. Once we click that, you can see that it's already added this instant static mesh to the target in here. That's why it's important that you add the instant static mesh before you, uh, uh, you add this in so it, it's easier to do it now in here it says um, you know for new mesh so we've got to define a mesh we're not going to select it from this list we have to define the mesh 
uh, in a different way. So what the first we want to do is click on the variables here, click on the plus button, call this static mesh, and then change it to an actual static mesh. Okay, and that's, oh, sorry, for some reason, didn't work. Let me try that again. So selecting static mesh and then just choose object reference. And also click this button over here, this I here. Now we can actually control left click and drag and bring the static mesh into our uh, viewport. Then we can connect these like that. And now we basically are uh, using this static mesh to define what the instance of this is. So this will reduce performance cost because you're effectively taking one copy of a static mesh and then multiplying it however many times you want. And it's the same mesh over and over again, rather than you. So now you're losing resources by doing this. Now, um, just very quickly, we can do like an optimization thing here where we can do like a clear instances just to save on memory. Um, so this is not important necessarily, but it's not needed, but you know, it's still good. Now these meshes, when we generate them, we want them to be at a certain distance from each other. So we can click on this variable button again and create a new variable called spacing. And then the variable uh, type is going to be changed to float like that. Um, spacing can be defined, so we can actually click this eye drop in here to define it later. And now, if we hold Alt on the keyboard and left click and drag, we can drag a point where it says, well, a node where it says set spacing. So we're going to set spacing based on the bounding box of the mesh that we're uh, entering. So we're doing a calculation of the bounding, bounding box of the object that we're bringing in in order to say how far away the, the each instance mesh has to be from each other. So in order for us to, to do this, we can bring in the static mesh in here, drag from it and search for get bounding box. Okay, and this is the, you know, obviously taking the account of the bounding box, then we can break that box into uh, some of its parts, we've got a minimum maximum of the bounding box. And what we want to do is we want to make a calculation between the maximum bounding box minus the minimum. So we are going to look at minus or subtract. And then with that, we can subtract the minimum bounding box from the maximum bounding box to give us a precise coordinate of what we need. And then we can actually, uh, the, the, so it really depends on what axis you're sort of uh, creating, you know, you're doing the uh, spacing, but we're gonna do this on the X axis. So I'm just gonna break vector to search for, sorry, let me just take my mouse. So search for break vector. And you can see in here, we got the X axis. Now we also need to define uh, a uh, offset. So we can actually select spacing and control D uh, to duplicate. And then we can call that offset. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to um, calculate the X value of our uh, mesh, um, the bounding box uh, value that we've got. And we're going to uh, more basically um, not multiply, but add that to the offset. So I'm going to search for, just type in plus, forget to get the add node. And then in here, you can just drag in the offset like that. So now we're adding those together. And with this information that we just got here, we can actually connect this over to our spacing. So we're setting the spacing with this. We can then connect the node like that. Okay. And now we need to set the number of instances that we're going to, uh, to generate. Um, but we also need to calculate the spline length, uh, you know, the, the spline, the, this spline's length in order to give us, um, a, you know, a, an actual understanding of how many instances we can generate. So with that in mind, we can bring our spline. So control left click and drag the spline over into here. And we're going to divide the space, the, the, the spline length. So get spline length. Okay. We're going to divide this by the uh, spacing value. So the way to do this, we are going to drag a, well, actually, we're just going to type in uh, divide. And that's the over there, the node. We can then connect this. So as I said, we're dividing this one to the spacing value from here. Uh, we can also add a uh, floor number, uh, sorry, a floor node in order to uh, round up the number. So I'm just going to look for floor like that. And we've got a return value in here. So what we want to do now is set the number of instances. So, you know, obviously when we, when we sort of like look for this, um, actually not like that. Let me just have a look. We need another component in here, uh, to be added as well for our number of instances. 
So I'll show you that now. So a very important step right here is to create a local variable. So we're going to click this uh, plus button over here. And we are going to call this a uh, number of instances. And yeah, that's, um, you know, keeping it as a float is not going to work for us. We're going to have to put it as an in in integer. Okay, so with that done, we can alt left click and we're going to get this in here. So now we're going to connect this pin over to this pin. And we're going to take this return value and put in the number of instances. Now we're going to add a for loop node, which is going to ensure um, that we're actually getting, uh, sorry, not, not for each loop. Instead is for loop. So just make sure you're not getting that wrong. So it has to be for loop, not for each loop. Then connect this to the last index. First index, leave it to zero. Okay, and this is sort of like the final bit in here where we're adding the instance. So I'm just going to drag from here, add instance. And it's already selecting, you know, instance static mesh, which is what we want, uh, like that. And this is going to, we, we need to basically tell it where uh, to generate it to. And we're going to use the information that we have stored in our index here to generate that. So we're going to drag in here and get location. Um, at index and nothing shows up. Um, we're just gonna have to untick this context sensitive in order for you to get that. Um, actually, no, that's not the one that I'm looking for. Well, let me just. No, actually, we need to gen. We'll, we'll create one ourselves. Actually, yeah, that will be that will be better. So what I mean by this is over in here we can add we can add new elements. Let me just compile first. Obviously, we're getting an error because we haven't connected everything in here. But what we can do is over into the um, event graph in here, we can, uh, sorry, not the, the functions graph, sorry. We can create our own function. So I'm going to create one and I'm going to call it get location at index like that. And then you can see this automatically was opened. So now we can start populating it. Uh, generally, these things always uh, have the same sort of end, which is a return node like that, you see. But uh, we're also going to have to add a return value. So what we're doing is we need in here an input and an output. So what I mean by this, once we compile, we're able to do an input, which is, uh, you know, like that. And I can actually select that input and, you know, call it A. And this input is going to be an integer like that. And we're going to be able to use this. And then for the return value here, which, by the way, you can add it over here as well if you want. We just added a new return value. We're going to literally call that return value and return value, not M, just return value. And then we're going to make sure that this is a uh, vector a value like that. And now what this is, this is our index of location of our, our, our meshes. So now we need to divide, we need to multiply this. Sorry. Uh, we're going to multiply by our spacing. So I'm going to drag our spacing in here and not like that. We need to drag it with control left click and then connect the spacing into here like that. And now we have this multiplication and we can get location at distance along spline. So we need this node like that. And we've got to set the target. So the target is going to be our spline um, like that. Don't change anything else and just take this return value and connect it here. Now that we've done that, we can go back into our construction script. And now we can actually bring the uh, the location at index. So get location at index. And you see, we're calling the function. Oh, no, actually, we don't want to call the function. Um, let me just see if I can find it this way. No, let me see. Where am I going wrong here? Because I can't find it. I, it might be because. Um, it might be because of. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, this will still do the same thing. Let me try something else. I was actually trying to understand why this wasn't working. That's actually because I haven't set this to pure. So once you do that, you should be able to uh, be okay with it. So let me just have a look in here so this is now set to pure uh, i'm gonna go back into here 
we should be fine. So we're just going to get location at index like that. And just make sure you don't have context sensitive on and then just select this and it should be fine. But let's see if we get any issues. If we are, we're going to, we're going to be able to fix it anyway. Shouldn't be a problem. Now, what we want to do, we've got the location at index. We're going to duplicate it. So we've got it twice and we want to, um, we basically want to do a juxtaposition here. So we're going to add a divide, uh, sorry, a, um, subtract node like that. So we are subtracting this value from this value. And in here we need to add a plus. So that's an add operator and we can take this index and make it plus one and then connect this over into the a value in here. Okay. And now with this information, we can actually get a make transform, um, node like that. Um, actually, yeah, and we'll need, we'll need something else in between. We need a make rotation from X. So once you get that, you can actually, um, we can take the location. We'll take the location from this particular node here and the rotation, we can split the structure. We can split this structure as well, if you want, and we can get the X and Y of this. And then the rest just be, remains as one and zero. So then with this return value, we can connect it over in here like that and press compile. Now it seems we still have an error right here. So target must have a, um, must have a connection. Now it should just be the spline really, uh, for this, but as you can see, it won't let us because it says spline component object reference is not compatible with the BP spline generated, uh, reference. So I need to sort out this particular, um, this particular connection right here, because none of these will connect. It's all about how we set up the get location at the index in here. Um, so yeah, that's what we need to fix. So actually, since we made our get location at index pure, we can delete both of these now and instead get location at index. And instead of using the BP spline generator, we'll actually call the function. And now because it's pure, there's no longer a node that needs connecting to our entire sort of sequence. So we can take this return value and do exactly the same oper uh, operating operation that we did earlier. So I've got the second one here connect it like that, and then take this point and connect it in here. Okay. So now when I compile, we no longer get an error and the uh, blueprint is working. 